If you are familiar with Grand Seiko, you have probably heard of the now flagship model SLGH005 White Birch before. But lately, if you are in the market for a White Birch, things have gotten a lot more complicated for most people, since we also have the Spring Drive SLGA009 version of it, and a boutique exclusive SLGH011 Green Dial version, and now a Black Dial SLGH017 Titanium version and most likely more versions will be coming in the future. Today, I'm going to help you navigate all four of these current models and try to help you make your decision a little bit easier. Because while all of these are birches, every single one of these pieces deserve to exist and have a particular person who will love them. So let's find out which birch is the birch for you. What's up everyone, it's Chris with the Little Treasury Channel. Welcome back. This is where we bring you original and in-depth watch content at least once per week. If you haven't already, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be alerted as soon as we upload. I'm from Little Treasury Jewelers, which is located in Gambrels, Maryland. And it's where you go when you're in the know. As always, the watches that I review are for sale and can be purchased, so please see the description below to contact us. If you're just joining us now, I'll go over the watch's detailed measurements and features, and then I'll offer my personal opinion at the end. In our last video, I reviewed the SLGH-017 Night Birch, which has a black dial, but with a highly visible texture. It's also made out of high intensity titanium, which could be something that you've been waiting for in a birch. Check this video out anyway, if you haven't already though, since it will be a great companion to the one that you're watching right now. Wrist check time. I don't have a birch yet, so I'm wearing my SBGA-211 Snowflake. I don't care what Grand Seiko comes out with, this will always be an incredible and legendary timepiece that is irreplaceable. Now tell me which watch you're wearing while you're watching the video and make sure to tell me why. Now let's get on to the comparison. For most of this video, I'll be grouping the similar models together, which are the SLGH-005, the SLGH-011, and the SLGH-017 versus the SLGA-009, which is significantly different. The SLGH-017 Night Birch has a 39.8 mm case width, a 12 mm thickness, a 46.9 mm lug to lug, a 21.7 mm lug width, and weighs in at 113.62 grams. The SLGH-005 and SLGH-011 will have the exact same measurements, but with a weight of 176.27 grams instead. The SLGA-009 White Birch has a 39.8 mm case width, a 12.2 mm thickness, a 46.7 mm lug to lug, a 21.8 mm lug width, and weighs in at 177.34 grams. The cases on all four pieces will be the same Evolution 9 case, which is in stainless steel on all besides the SLGH-017 Night Birch, which is in high intensity titanium, which is an alloy of titanium, niobium, and iron, and is approximately 100 Vickers harder than stainless steel. It has wide, thin lugs with brushed finished tops, a stripe of high polish going along the edge, and more matte finish on the sides. The bezel is a flat brushed area that reflects light tremendously. The crown is a screw down and is placed at the three position and is bigger on the SLGA009 than on the other three. The crystal is box style and sits above the bezel to help protect it from scratches on all four pieces. The dial texture is the exact same on the SLGH-005, 017, and 011, which is strongly textured and shows up well on all three color options. The SLGH-009 dial texture is more subtle and is different from the others. It is, however, more white, while the SLGH-005 is actually silver. The chapter ring is thicker on the SLGA-009 and has some blank area between the black minute grade and the bezel. The minute grade is also black on the 005, but is white on the 011 and 017. The Grand Seiko logo can be found at the top middle portion applied in silver and Grand Seiko written beneath it in black on the SLGA-009 and the SLGH-005, while the others are all in silver. The markers are part of the Series 9 style, which are broad and easy to read. It grants it goes perfect high polish. The hour and minute hands are Dauphine style, and the hour hand has a chopped off tip with an indentation down the center. The second hand is blued on the 009 and 005, and now has a silver cap at the tip of the second pinion, versus a capless color match tip 
on the SLG H005, 017, and 011. The date window can be found at the three position and is slightly larger and also has a slightly bolder font than the SLG H005, 011, and 017. All date wheels will be white with black numerals except for the SLG A017, which is black with white numerals. A big difference here is that the mark to the right of the date window is now gone on the SLG A009. Spring drive and five days can be found in black at the lower middle portion of the dial, while the 005, 011, and 017 will have high beat 36,080 hours, with the 005 being in black and the 011 and 017 being in silver. No loom can be found on any of these pieces because it would most likely have ruined the stunning reflective effect of these markers, and it will be visible anyway until you're in very low light conditions since these markers are so darn reflective. The case back is open on all three models and has a Ghost Lion logo in the center. Well, on the SLG A009, we can see a power reserve indicator. It is powered by the brand new 9RA2 caliber, which is Grand Seiko's upgraded spring drive movement. It now has an accuracy of 10 seconds per month and a power reserve of five days. It has 38 joules, dual size barrels, and an offset magic lever to make it thinner. This movement achieves the extra accuracy by using a sophisticated thermocompensator that checks and adjusts for changes in temperature 540 times per day. If you aren't familiar with a spring drive, it is basically a spring powered movement that is regulated by a quartz crystal and has an electromagnetic braking system. The movement's finish is made to represent the frost that winter brings to the trees in the surrounding environment of the studio where it was made. While on the 005, 011, and 017, you will see the upgraded 9SA5 movement that is finished immaculately and has an open rotor. It has a dual impulse escapement that lets the escapement wheel transmit power directly to the balance, which leads to a significant increase in efficiency. It has a free sprung balance, which allows it to be more shock resistant and maintain accuracy over longer periods of time. And it uses a horizontal gear train that allows it to be 15% slimmer than the current Grand Seiko high beat caliber. What does this all mean though? You get a high beat 36,000 beat per hour caliber with an 80 hour power reserve and an accuracy of minus three to plus five seconds per day. The bracelet is Evolution 9 style and is made out of high intensity titanium on the 017 and stainless steel on the other three. It is 22 millimeters wide and a complete matte finish. A folding clasp can be found with the GS logo and no micro adjust. All the birches are 100 meter water resistant and the SLG H005, SLG A009 and SLG H011 can be yours for $9,100 while the SLG H017 is priced at $10,400. Now to help you decide which is for you and my personal opinion. So I'll start off by saying that you can't go wrong with any of these pieces and they will all fit fantastically on most wrist sizes, especially on my six and a half inch wrist. And they have a compact and sophisticated look to them. The dials will be a big factor in your decision process. And the most important piece of the puzzle, in my opinion here, is which of these watches will actually fit in your collection. You have to ask yourself, do you already have a great white dial piece? If so, then perhaps the SLG H005 might work because it's actually silver, or the SLG H017 will be a no-brainer since it's black with a texture that you can easily see, which is exciting. If you don't have a white dial in your collection, perhaps the SLG A009 will be the perfect choice because it is white and will fill that void very well. If you already have all of the neutral colors or maybe wear green more or have a unique personality, then the SLG H011 will be a good one for you. Although the dial in this piece actually looks more black and turquoise depending on the lighting. All three of the SLG H pieces really have a great texture though and will be significantly more visible than the SLG A009 texture. The SLG A009 does have one very important benefit to it and that will be the timekeeping accuracy. The spring drive will basically just be perfect all the time in accuracy, and you will never have to worry about it running out of spec. While the high beat on the others is a traditional mechanism, and you can't have the same level of accuracy. It's just impossible. The SLG H017 has a big feature being made out of high intensity titanium, which makes it a whopping 63 grams lighter than the rest, and gives it a warmer hue to the metal, which looks great with the black but it is $1,300 more expensive. So to conclude, you are probably wondering which piece that I would choose and why. And for me, it is without a doubt the SLG H017 Night Birch. 
Why? Because if you were spending $9,000, just spend a little bit more and get the titanium model, which I really enjoy the lightness of personally. Also, I think that the black is actually the best looking color with this dial texture. In my collection, this is the perfect companion to my Snowflake, since it is a high bead instead of spring drive, and it's in titanium as well, and black versus the white. So that's my choice, and I would love to know what your choice is, so please let me know which birch is for you in the comments below, and make sure to tell me why. Thanks for watching today, everyone. I really hope that you enjoyed the video, and of course, if you did, please make sure to hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, and share with all of your friends and your family members, too. I look forward to seeing you next video.